Hi everybody, this is Mr. Zarzak and we're back down in my basement yet again to bring you another edition of Physics Underground. So for today's video, I'm going to take you through the ins and outs and the data collection for the VIR lab. So grab yourself a copy of the lab and let's get started. Okay, so for, for this lab, the equipment we have here, this, this big gray box, this is our power supply. This is going to act as our voltage source. There's two little um, leads coming out of here. This is the positive, the red is the positive terminal and the black is the negative terminal. Okay, and then you've got a resistor. So this is a rectangular prism shape. Okay, the two most common shapes for resistors are this, this box shape and then cylinders because they're easy geometries to work with when you're trying to change the physical parameters of a resistor to change its resistance. So we've been introduced to the idea that the resistance of a material depends upon both what, it, or both what it's made of and the shape it takes. So the, the longer the resistor, the greater the resistance and also the, the cross-sectional area makes a difference. So if, we, if, this was a, if this little square C was here was bigger, the, it would actually offer up less resistance. Okay, well anyways, so you do need to record both the, the resistance value and the tolerance. So we see 500 ohms here and then this 10%. The, the five watts is the power range over which the resistance is guaranteed. That'll, that'll come in, in later right now, just the 500 ohms and the 10% is what you need to record for the lab. For the second set of data, you're gonna use a little bit of light, or a little light bulb. We'll come back to that later. All right, so the, the lab gives you a diagram that has the power supply, that's our, that's our voltage source. And the way that we draw that Okay, is we have two lines like this. Okay, so this is this is to represent the positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. And then when we just draw straight lines coming out, that's to represent just wires. Okay, so we're going to run a wire from the positive terminal, and then we're going to take that into the resistor. Okay, so that little squiggly that's the that's the symbol for a resistor. All right, and then we're going to connect another wire back to the negative terminal. When we make diagrams like this, okay, we square them off like this just to, to make the picture easy to follow. You'll see that when we start adding things in with actual wires, it can really quickly turn into this spaghetti mess. So this is designed to give us a nice clean schematic of, of what we're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and build this circuit. All right, so I have some wires here and uh, the wires that I have, they are color coded, black and red, but honestly, that's just the color of the insulation on the outside. The, the color, it doesn't make any difference other than it makes it a little bit easier for us to track things. Okay, so if you're real meticulous about building your circuits, you might, you might color code it or you might be kind of sloppy. It really doesn't matter in terms of the functionality. Okay, so anyway, so I have a wire coming out of the positive terminal and a wire coming out of the negative terminal. And to that, I'm just going to connect to these two leads of my resistor. Okay, so here's, again, here's the positive terminal. The wire comes out uh, to one part of the resistor. So that'd be the analogous to this part of the diagram coming out of the positive terminal going into the resistor. Okay, this is the resistor, and then the other end of it, this black wire here goes back to this negative terminal here, okay? Um, the reason that they use this little squiggly is just to show it's like a longer path. The resistor makes it more difficult for the current to flow through, okay? So then the next thing is that we've got our two meters, okay? So this is our ammeter, uh, measures current in um, milliampere. In this case, the standard unit is the amp, okay? So you'll need to, you'll need to convert all the readings that you take in the lab. Uh, for milliamps and amps before you plot your graphs. And then this is the, the voltmeter, okay, just measured in volts, all right? So how do you connect these things? Well, for the ammeter, okay, the current is, is it, that's literally the flow of charge that's going through the resistor, okay? So the way that we, we aren't this is the direction of positive current flow would come out of the positive side of the battery or the po voltage supply and into the negative. So the current would flow around like this, all right? And so what we wanna do is we wanna connect the ammeter, what we call in series, and so, Okay, that little circle is to represent my meter. And I put a little letter A here, so it's in series. Now, how does that work? Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab two wires. Okay, and again, the, the color just doesn't matter so much other than it makes it easier to see what's kind of going on in video. All right, so with my ammeter, okay, I've got all these different terminals here. All right, so I'll bring this really close. This is the 10 milliamp scale. Okay, so zero to 10, the numbers on the bottom. This is the 100 milliamps, so these are the middle row of numbers. And then this is the 500 milliamps, so this is the top row of numbers. Okay, so just for, for safety, I'm gonna to go to the highest setting. I can always turn down later. Okay, I'm gonna connect my two wires. Okay, so this is, this is the negative terminal, so it's the common. So I'm always gonna use that one. I'm gonna use one of these three here. Okay, well the deal is I have to force 
all the current coming out of the power supply out of this positive terminal to go through the ammeter before it goes into the resistor. And so what I'm physically going to do is I'm going to break the circuit by disconnecting the wire. I'm going to take and I'm going to connect these two red wires together like this. All right. And so now what we got here is we've got the, here's the positive terminal. So I've got one wire coming out, coming out, going into the ammeter. And then it's going to come out of that black wire. And then it's going to go into my resistor. And so all the current flowing out of the power supply, the voltage source has to go through the ammeter before it can pass through this little resistor. We said that that's wired in series, okay? Um, and so if I, turn my, if I turn my power supply on, Okay, you can see, we'll be with the data part later, but I can turn and see the needle starts to turn as I turn the dial on the power supply. So as I crank up the voltage with one hand, we see the result of that on the ammeter on the other. Okay, and if I change the scale, so here if I go to a more sensitive scale, okay, you can see that the, the needle goes a lot farther because I'm on a different scale than here. And this one I'll probably go, yep, I'm already off scale. Okay, so probably for this I'd be somewhere in the middle. We'll, we'll get more detailed readings um, in the next part of this. I just want to show you how to connect connect up the meters. Okay, so then the next part is going to be the voltmeter. Right. If you remember, voltage is about the change in electrical potential energy per unit charge. So it's about, it's about measuring a change before versus after. So if we're going to measure the voltage across the resistor, we're going to connect the voltmeter a little differently. Okay, we're going to connect the voltmeter around the resistor like that, okay? So we call that a parallel connection. Okay, and so the way that we do that, let me grab two wires for my voltmeter. Okay, so again, with the voltmeter, I have three scales. Okay, the lowest is 1.5, that's the lowest set of numbers. Okay, on the bottom, the middle set of numbers on the scale, that's three volts, and then this is 30 volts. You'll get closer up views of this in a minute here. So just like with the ammeter, okay, I'm always going to connect one wire to that black terminal. I'm just going to choose one of these three. Again, just for safety, I can always go more sensitive. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to choose the least sensitive um, terminal to begin with. Okay, and if I take these two wires, put this over here so you can see this. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So I just take the two wires, all right, and you still got the resistor here on the table. Okay, and I literally just connect right around. You can see I've actually got this connected backwards. You can see that the dial's wiggle in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna connect them the other way around. Okay, and there we go, the needle just went up. Okay, I've got it connected around the wire. And see if I take the if I take the little dial on the power supply and turn it up and down, you can see the voltmeter is moving. Okay, this is where the utility of the circuit diagram can come in real handy. I mean here we see it's nice and clean and simple and easy to read. And even with this very basic circuit, this is already this is already pretty a pretty big mess with spaghetti wires. Okay, so it's useful to have something to kind of guide where we're looking. All right, and as time goes on, uh, we want you to be able to to look at this arrangement and trace the wires with your eyes and see exactly how everything is connected. Okay, so I'm going to change around the arrangement a little bit here so that you can get nice close-ups of both the meters, and we're going to start taking data. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, folks. So what I have set up here is I have a 500 ohm resistor. I've completed the circuit and I've got both the meters uh, connected and the power supply is on. So right away we can get our first data point. Um, I, if you notice here, I've got the ammeter plugged into the 100 milliamp uh, slot and then the, the voltmeter is in the 30 volt uh, slot as well. Okay, so we, we need at least five data points here. So we're going to start at this is going to be our peak value. I'm just going to turn down uh, the power supply so we can collect data. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So again, this was data point number one. Okay, so here, we'll call this data point number two. Go ahead and record your values. Make that data point number three. We'll call that data point number four. And I'm actually gonna switch scales here. Okay, I don't think I can. Let's see if we can get one. There we go. Call that data point number five. All right, and I can turn the 
the power supply down a little bit more. So let's just grab a couple more data points just so we have them. Okay, let's call that number six. And again, I'm in the 10 milliamp setting, and this is the three volt setting. Okay, we'll do that as our last one. We'll call that number seven. So that should be more than enough data, okay, for us to, to plot our graph from here. If you need to go back and grab any of these readings and just rewind the video, and we're gonna switch the circuit over from the resistor to the light bulb. Okay, so just give me a second. Okay, so here I've got the, I've got the light bulb and the, the circuit is all connected up and the meters are connected in and there's actually current running through uh, the light bulb right now, but it's not lit yet as you can see. So I have the ammeter in the 100 milliamp port and the voltmeter is in the 1.5 uh, volt channel. So using that scale, go ahead and just take your reading. This is for our uh, necessary data point down below uh, 15 milliamps. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to turn this up a little bit so we can get another data point. Okay, so here, here's data point number two. Okay, so go ahead and take your readings. All right, and then if I go a little bit higher. Okay, so that's about as high as we're gonna get on this scale. Okay, so go ahead and take this. This will be data point number three. All right, then I'm just gonna take and change my ammeter from the 100 milliamps up to the 500 so that we can get some, some values that are a little bit higher. So if I turn the turn this up a little bit more here, okay, you can see that we finally got some light coming out of the light bulb, so we'll use that, what is that, data point number four. Okay, you can see here that the, the voltmeter is getting pretty close, okay, to peaking out here, so we can't really go much farther. We're, we're already off scale, so I'm gonna switch the voltmeter now. Okay, so now I'm on the, the three volt scale. Okay, so let's turn this up a bit. Okay, so we'll, we'll call this data point number five. Go ahead and record those values. Okay, and looks like that's peaking out. I'm actually gonna go a little bit higher so before we even record. I'm gonna take my voltmeter and switch that up to the, the 30 volt setting. Okay, so let's call that, let's make that data point number six. Go ahead and record your values. And then one more, because the light bulb's getting pretty bright. That's about the peak that we wanna go there. So. We'll make this one here data point number seven. So go ahead and record that as well. And if I just put, I'll just push a little bit farther just so we have one more data point. Okay, so that's pretty much the absolute limit of what we can get. Okay, so this is an extra data point too. All right, so that should give you plenty to, to build your graph for the light bulb. Okay, so the last little thing that I wanted you to see was, well, in the first part of the lab, we were working with one of these rectangular prism shaped uh, resistors. And I told you that um, the two most common shapes for the for resistors are either these rectangular prisms or they're often cylindrical okay and the reason is is that when we compute the resistance based upon the material's resistivity and its physical dimensions working with geometries like boxes and cylinders is really easy so what i did was is i took a pencil okay and i cut it down so that i could expose the lead but of course we know that well, with um, lead pencils it's not really lead it's actually carbon it's graphite Okay, and so the shape is roughly cylindrical, and carbon is a very common uh, material to use for resistors. Okay, and so what we've got here is, is we've got a resistor, and well, it's actually a resistor where we can vary the resistance, and I'll show you how. Okay, so anyway, so back on the table, I've got the light bulb, and I've got the meters, just so you can see. I've got, uh, I added in a couple of wires here, just so I can work with these two. If I put make contact, you can see both the light comes on, and that the, the two dials Okay, go up. So there's both voltage and current flowing through the light bulb, as you can see, well, because the light lights up. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I'm just going to tape this pencil down on both sides just to kind of hold it in place. Since I don't have a lab partner. All right, and then I'm going to come on down here. I'm going to take the two leads, okay, and I'm going to make contact with the two leads right on... The graphite and you can see if you look closely the light bulb lights up nowhere near as bright as it did before okay because I've introduced essentially a cylindrical resistor now you can see that the dials are moving here watch what happens as I take my alligator clip here and I move it a little bit closer I'm effectively reducing the length of the resistor which has the effect of reducing its resistance you so like out here 
Okay, it lights up, but it's not as bright as when I shorten the length of the resistor. And as I bring these closer, the light bulb just gradually gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And then it, last but not least, I'll just make contact with the two metal leads so you can see it adds some maximum brightness. Okay, and so what do we really have here? Okay, is we have a crude form of a dimmer switch just by having a variable resistor by changing the physical properties. In other words, the, the length of this gets shortened as I move the two leads together, shortens length of the resistor, less resistance. Pretty cool. All right, this is Mr. Zarzak saying thanks for joining us for this edition of Physics Underground in the VIR Lab, and we'll see you next time.